thanks for coming this morning, and thanks for the board members, especially for sticking around after kind of a late night last night. Um, I'm Carrie Corrigan, and I am the curator of Antarctic Meteorites in the Department of Mineral Sciences. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about our Antarctic Meteorite program and how we're using all of the meteorites in the collection um, and a project to try and study the bombardment history of the inner solar system. So first, this is just to show you, orient you a little bit. This is where we are today. This is where most of you actually do your work, but some of us actually have a larger uh, place to play. We, can, we have samples from the Earth, from the Moon, from Mars, and from the asteroid, and asteroid belt in general. The asteroid belt is here between Mars and Jupiter. Those are the meteorites that I'm going to talk to you about today, meteorites from there, and particularly some from the S-type asteroids, which doesn't have to mean anything to you, but it's basically the meteorites that we have the most samples from on the Earth and in our, Earth, our terrestrial collections. This is just because I was wanting to make sure I fit in. The last round of talks we had, uh, we had all these phylogenetic trees, and I was panicking because we don't have those in, in meteorites, and so I found one. Um, this, is, this is the meteorite tree, the cosmogenetic tree, and these are the ordinary chondrites that we're going to talk about today. So where do we get most of the, the meteorites that we have in the collections here at the museum? And the answer is Antarctica. And if you were at the talk last night, you heard Steve Squires talking about what a horrible place it is. And he's wrong. It's actually a really nice place. It's cold, but it's a beautiful, beautiful place, and it's a fun place to do field work. Um, many of the people in this room have actually been down to Antarctica on these meteorite collecting tours. And we spend six or seven weeks in a tent out on the Antarctic plateau along the Transantarctic Mountains, looking through, sometimes through terrestrial rocks, and sometimes just driving along on snowmobiles, back and forth in a regular pattern across bare ice, looking for meteorites. And here's a lovely one here with a little scale bar. Each one gets a number. And this is uh, me. See, I was happy. I was not unhappy to be in Antarctica. And we found, this is a large meteorite that we found. It's one of these ordinary chondrites that come from the S-type asteroids. And this was the largest one we found that particular season. So the Antarctic Meteorite Collection has, to date, collected about 20,000 meteorites, just over 20,000 meteorites in this past season, um, from uh, using the numbers from this past season. And each meteorite that we find is a bigger piece, another piece, to trying to understand the whole puzzle of how the solar system formed. And 90% of the meteorites are these type that I'm talking about, these ordinary chondrites. 90% of our collections are this type of material. And some of these are brecciated. And those are the kinds that we're the most interested in for this project. Breccia is basically a, a rock of any type that's made up of lots of different pieces of rocks put back together. So it could be all the same type of rock put back together, or it could be lots of different rocks, so you can see here, different rock types glued back together in one. And part of the project that we're doing is trying to understand how many ordinary chondrites are breccias. And one of our results is about that we've found at about 20% of these our breaches. So the project itself revolves around how the early solar system was bombarded. And there's evidence on the moon. If you look up at the moon, this is what you see, lots of dark gray patches, right? And those are all from, an, from different impacts of other large things hitting the moon. So the evidence on the moon we find for actual melt comes from these tiny little pieces of melted rock in lunar breccias. So meteorites or the Apollo samples, breccias from the moon that have tiny little pieces of lunar um, melt. And if you, the ages of these all seem to point towards something big happening about 3.9 billion years ago. And we think that if this was the case on the moon, it should have also been the case on the asteroid belt. And so we're looking through these ordinary chondrite breccias to try and find little pieces of melt in them to see if they also have a 3.9 peak or if there are many older than that. So how do we do this exactly? We had, I was fortunate enough to have an, a natural history research experience intern last summer, and we looked through about 100 meteorites and found about 20 breccias. We sliced them open, so these are a couple of inches across. We look at the slices just on the face of a sliced meteorite and, and find pieces that we think are interesting, and then we make uh, microscope thin sections, so slice them thin, glue them to a piece of glass at about, about as thick as a human hair, and try and find these melted clasts. Here are just a few examples of what the melted clasts look like in our scanning electron microscope. 
These, this is a backscattered image, so the brightest things you're seeing here are the iron nickel metal that we find in meteorites. This is an even, the, the field of view on these is about 600 microns across. Here we've taken that backscattered image on another class and overlaid uh, aluminum, magnesium, and calcium maps so we can actually see a little bit more about the compositions. And then here we have actually blown it up even farther. This little tiny scale bar at the bottom is 50 microns. So we're looking at that texture to try and see if we can indeed see that these pieces of rock were melted. And why do we care if they're melted? Basically, we want to figure out how old that piece of melt is. And when they're melted to a certain extent, their isotope ratios are reset and the clock starts ticking again. And so we can actually date these melt class. And if we are able to date the melt class in these um, ordinary chondrites that come from the S-type asteroids, we'll be able to tell a number of things. One, we have you know, ages just within a single meteorite. There could be different melted age class. We could find them in different types of ordinary chondrites. We could look and see the ages of impacts and the ranges of impact ages across the entire asteroid belt. And that will give us a much better understanding of the whole early solar system bombardment, whether it was just this peak at 3.9 billion years or if we have a spread that's just not showing up on the moon but does show up in the asteroid belt. Thanks. Yep. Why did you look for these meteorites in Antarctica? The question was, why do we look for the meteorites in Antarctica? And partly, it's not because the meteorites fall there preferentially. They fall all over the Earth. They're just much easier to find there because they're trapped in the ice for so long. And then when they end up running into the Trans-Antarctic Mountains, when the ice runs in there, they're actually brought to the surface by the ice ablating and eroding away. So they're actually left sitting on the surface. And we've found places where there are concentrations of tens of thousands of meteorites in these areas. And we can basically just walk along and pick them up.